broader macro economy now because negotiations are, of course, continuing in Washington, not just over the stimulus package, but now over a stopgap funding bill that's going to hopefully keep the government open. Our Jessica Smith has been tracking all of the developments for us. Jess. Yeah, Julie, the House is set to vote today on a short term bill that would avert a government shutdown at the end of the week giving negotiators more time to come up with a long-term spending bill and that coronavirus relief package. There were a lot of moving parts yesterday on the stimulus front. Most recently, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin made Speaker Pelosi a $916 billion offer. According to the Washington Post, that offer contained a $600 stimulus check and it would cut the weekly unemployment boost to, to zero. It would eliminate that. You'll remember the bipartisan deal that's in the works right now has that weekly boost at $300. Mnuchin's offer would also include state and local aid and liability protections, but Democrats are not going for this. Speaker Pelosi and Minority Leader Schumer put out a statement saying it was progress, but they said they need to let bipartisan negotiations continue, that this shouldn't get in the way of those talks. They also said the unemployment insurance changes were unacceptable. Now, all of this happened just hours after Majority Leader McConnell made a really big concession saying that negotiators should drop liability protections, they should drop state and local aid, and move on with what they can agree with. Liability protections have been his red line. So that was a big change from him being willing to give those up. But negotiators on, on the other side of the aisle say you can't leave state and local governments without additional aid that is really important to avoid a layoffs of essential workers. Um, Dems call it called it appalling. They called it sabotage. Let's watch. Senator McConnell is trying to pull the rug out from beneath the Gang of Eight. We believe they have been making good progress and they ought to be allowed to move forward because they are the best hope for a bipartisan solution. My view, and I think it's a view shared by literally everybody on both sides of the aisle, we can't leave without doing a COVID bill. The country needs it. We have an agreement that we need to do this. We are still waiting for the final details of that $908 billion bipartisan proposal Um, Senator Manchin, who is one of the lead lawmakers in this effort, said in an interview this morning that they were close. Um, He also spoke about Mnuchin's offer, saying that cutting UI benefits, the weekly boost to zero, just does not make sense. So we'll be looking for more details of that package, and we'll see how Mnuchin's offer plays into those negotiations going forward. Oh, Jess, I'm going to ask you what I always ask you, which is, is it really going to get done this time? I mean, you've been watching the process this whole time. Does it really feel closer? No, I, I, I don't know if it does. It felt closer at maybe at the beginning of this week. Um, but yesterday with all of these different moving parts and, and you see that that this this offer from the White House that we'll see if this derails the talks here at all. Um, it'll be interesting to see what this proposal actually looks like. If Democrats and Republicans in this group are able to come to an agreement on liability provisions, maybe, maybe that is progress. If they're able to, to figure something out that the rest of the Congress can be okay with, um, we'll, we'll see. If this group can come up with liability provisions, then I'll be a little optimistic. All right. Well, we will check back in with you to find out if it does. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jess. 